Okay, let's do our warm up first and then figure out what we're doing. So go ahead and what am I doing? Inhale, hands to your shoulders. Exhale, hands to your heart. Stretch forward. Exhale behind. Fingertips clasp and lift your heart. Exhale and pivot over. So come into your forward bend as deeply as you need and bring your hands up. So just kind of move your head around, get your neck released. And then knees bent, chin in, and lift your ribs as you drop your sitting bones, wind your way all the way into the back bend. And just focus into that upper heart area and lift it. Keep breathing. And then inhale up and release. So feel your circulation and your spine. Then we'll inhale up to the sides, exhale to your heart, stretch forward, and exhale behind you. Clasp the other way, and again, lift your heart. Exhale, and come on over, and relax. Tuck in your chin, move your neck around, bend your knees, lift your sitting bones, and hands toward your head. And again, wind your way slowly into that upper body back bend and stretch your spine. Keep lengthening through the whole body. And then inhale upright, release your arms and just feel the circulation warming you. Arms to the sides, palms toward the ceiling and over your shoulders. Clasp your hands, pull the arms back by your ears, sitting bones down, and into the side, no twisting. So get that rib area stretching apart, push the foot you're leaning away from down. And then inhale back to the center, switch your hands around, <clears throat> and lean to the other side. And again, maximize with that foot pressing away, and Lengthen through the ribs. And again, coming up, exhale back into that. Take a moment feeling your sides a little bit more stretched out. And we'll twist. So remember, sitting bones down, crown high, and palms up, lower your shoulders, clasp your elbows. So soften your knees, stretch your spine apart, and exhale into your twist. Lengthen your body, stretch it open, pivot over, and relax. So twist, forward bend, just keep the weight on both feet evenly, and relax. And then inhale, stay in your twist coming up, and look to the ceiling, shoulders down, elbows back, and lift your heart just a little for an upper body back in one more time. And inhale back up, exhale to the center, switch your arms around, <coughs> and get ready to twist. So lengthen, stretching, exhale, and twist. And again, breathing in, stretch it up, and then exhale, pivoting forward. So just come into your forward bend on this side again. See if you can keep that weight evenly distributed. And slowly work your way up. And lift your heart. Elbows back, shoulders down. And again, be really gentle in that lower back while you're twisting. And then inhale upright. Exhale to the center. Arms up. Okay, keep them by your ears, shoulders, shoulder blades down, ribs in, and push your sitting bones back, pivot at your hip joint in, and see if you can keep your arms by your ears as you pivot forward. And then drop into right go. So just relax, lift your sitting bones, kind of pull your ribs in toward your sides, toward your thighs, and relax. And then slowly work your way back up and into mountain pose. So let's step wide 
with the feet angled out. And then sitting bones down, ribs in, and we're going to come all the way to the floor. So bend your knees toward your toes, not beyond it, really push your sitting bones behind you. And then standing up as you inhale, bring your hands to your hips. Exhale down, inhale up, and we'll do it a few times. And begin going faster. So exhale as you go down, inhale as you come up, and go as deep as you want into it. So remember, if that's not feeling so good, you can go always just to your knees rather than the floor, if that's what you prefer. So go a little faster, coming up and down, down and up, and see how that goes, kind of energizing yourself a little bit more, getting that whole hip area worked out, because I think we'll do a little hip stuff today. And back up and into mountain pose. Take a moment feeling more circulation, a little bit more opening maybe through the hips, pelvis. And let's again angle your feet up just a little bit, knees go in the direction your toes go. And bend your knees, hands above the knees. So don't press on your knees, on your legs, and pelvic tilt. So just pushing back, back bend in that lower back, chest going forward, and then rounding, and allowing the pelvis to sink forward, sitting bones coming down and forward. And a few times through that range of motion. So working the abs a little bit, getting the spine, going through its whole lengthening as you go both into the back bend and the forward bend. And just notice how that middle of your body is working and how that pelvis is moving. So the knees don't move, they stay right above the toes and the shoulders stay right above that. And the only thing that moves really is your middle of your body through that torso, solar plexus area, and of course the pelvis. And then rounding forward and coming back up and again into the mountain pose. So a little bit more energy through again that midsection and hip area. And then inhale, stretch it up. Exhale and come on into child's pose as we get onto the floor. So go as deep into your child pose as you like. You know the adjustments. Anything you need to pad, feel free. And then inhaling, sit up and come all the way into staff position. So legs out in front. Sitting bones connect evenly. Kind of push the sitting bones a little bit back so you're into the front of them. And kind of roll the thighs in so the kneecaps and toes are straight up. And then bring your one foot up to your opposite thigh and let the knee come down. So you're working at this hip rotator flexor area a little bit, just allowing that knee to come toward the floor. If it's really tight, remember, put padding under you so you tip more forward or bring the leg from the front over to the side. And that gives it a little bit more opening for that knee to come there. But your choice, personal practice. So just allow, you can have your hand there, but not a lot of pressure. It doesn't need to get to the floor. If it does, that's fine. If it doesn't, that's fine too. Remember, whatever is right for you. Just relax. 
where, wherever it's tight. Big muscles, they take some time sometimes to relax. The longer you hold the positions, of course, the more it's going to have that opportunity. And then bring the foot up into your hand and the other hand on the knee or pull it in and wrap your arms around. And hip rotator motion, moving it back and forth, getting that fluid even more warmed up because we're going to do a few things with it today. So just back and forth as much as it wants to go. And of course, if you love it and it gets feeling easy, you can go higher or closer, which makes it more intense. So personal practice, wherever you need to be, that's fine. And then release that. And again, adjust on your sitting bones, coming back into staff position. Notice the difference on the two sides because this one's warmer and a little bit more flexible. So let's even it up. So foot comes up. Notice that one side may be easier than the other. This is my injured hip, so this one's really tight. And go ahead again, get your padding or the leg over to the side if that's going to be necessary for your body today. And again, just a little weight for your hand, getting that knee a little deeper if that is something you want to do or not. Just allow it to do whatever it needs to to release. <clears throat> so just relaxing and allowing things to go to their position that they want to be in and then relax it a little bit more. And the more that you allow it to relax, the deeper that motion will go but it never needs to do anything it doesn't want to do. So be gentle if you need to. And then foot coming up, hanging on or wrapping it in, and move that hip rotate. So just as much or as little as it wants to move. And as it starts to warm up, if you're loving it, again, you can bring it higher or closer as you need to or want to or don't want to. And again, just relax. And then release that, and once more, adjust into your sitting bones. So take the bottoms of your feet together and pull them in into butterfly. So this is gonna stretch through that inner thigh area. Heels come as close as you want. <clears throat> you can put your Index and middle fingers around your toe, thumb on top, or you can just have your hands on your feet. And just let those knees come as much toward the floor as they want to. So ribs are in and up, supporting your low back, and that spine nice and straight and aligned. Reach up to the ceiling with your crown. And then bring your hands behind, right close to your body, and just a little pressure in the hands, and that kind of opens that front of your body, releases the inner muscles of that hip area, and lets those knees maybe come a little bit deeper into the butterfly. So kind of angle the bottoms of your feet toward the ceiling. That helps to align the knees a little bit more somehow. I don't know, that's what they say. So go ahead and maximize that or not doing whatever your body thinks it needs to open up through that hip and inner thigh area. And then release your hands back to the center. Lift your knees and bring the legs back out in front. So one foot up to the inner thigh with that knee out to the side. Got your triangle at the top. Bring the other foot into the triangle and just sit a little bit forward. This is called perfect posture. So if you're sitting on the floor a long time, this is a good one. So it just kind of angles you a little bit more pelvically tilted forward with the sitting bones a little bit further back. And it throws your spine into that nice upright lengthening position. 
So just kind of focus on ribs in and up, getting that core activated while you let those legs just relax. And we won't sit here long because then we wouldn't get everything done. So go ahead and bring your legs out. And we got a perfect posture to the other side. So foot up to your thigh, adjust on your sitting bones, get that triangle, and bring your foot into it. And again, just kind of sink into that, getting those sitting bones kind of pushing back and your body into that straight up, upright, seated position as you're in your perfect posture. So breathing, just relax down into the sitting bones, into the legs. And of course you can always pad if that's kind of not working for you. And again, releasing that one, bring the legs back to the center. So we're gonna do half locust or half locust. And lotus, lotus, that's it, lotus, half lotus. It's kind of intense on the hips if you go into full lotus, but half lotus isn't too bad. So bring your foot up with the kind of bottom of the foot toward the ceiling and let this knee come down toward the floor. And then just wrap that other leg to support it with the foot under the knee. So sitting bones go back. You kind of pelvically tilt a little bit more. If that's feeling comfortable and this knee wants to drop all the way down, you can bring the other foot up and into full lotus, but I don't like it. So I didn't do it. But you can if you want to. It's a little more intense through that hip area, so do what's right for you. And again, <clears throat> the more you get the sitting bones going back, so again, you can pad behind you to get that lift if that's something that you want to do to get that knee down. But once the knee is down, you can bring that other foot up into full lotus. And you'll look like one of those guru people that sit there and go, boom, mm. or not. And then again, we're going to unwind back into step. So just take a moment there feeling how that's working in your body. And we'll do it to the other side. So other foot comes up. Again, kind of angle that foot up. Let the knee come down. If it doesn't make it and you don't want to go into full lotus, just half lotus with the foot underneath supporting it. So again, as you get that foot under to support it, kind of gives you that, again, pelvic motion to get those sitting bones a little bit further back and makes it a little bit easier for that knee to come down so that if you do want to remove it, the knee may come all the way down and you may be able to flip that other one up and do full lotus on this side. Some people find one side easier than the other because remember, creatures of habit, we get those hips kind of skewed and one side is easier than the other side. So allow your body just to relax in whichever position you decide to be in and observe. And notice one side or the other may be easier. And again, let's go and release into our step position. So kind of feel the hips, feel your body, and just notice how that has worked through your pelvic area. And again, pressing out through the bottoms of the feet with the toes coming up, kind of shift those sitting bones back a little bit more. We're gonna pivot even more through the hip joint. So bring your arms out, turn the palms up and over your shoulders. And like we did the other day, we're gonna just bring them down to the shoulders, sinking into the sitting bones, Stretch up through the spine, through the fingertips, and exhale down. So really sink into the sitting bones. Stretch from the sitting bones up through the crown, through the fingertips. Oh, exhale. Come on down one more time. So really, really stretch up this time as you inhale. And pivot, chest and chin leading. Reach for your feet, pouring your legs for the floor. 
Shift the sitting bones back a little bit more so you get a little bit more pivot at that hip joint at the top of the thighs. And again, chest and chin coming even further forward. Not tucking your chin, don't bring the forehead down. We want to keep the spine nice and straight while you're in this forward pivot. <clears throat> so again, maximize that, bringing your ribs down toward your thighs. <clears throat> well, I thought my voice was better today. Now it's getting clogged. So keep pushing the sitting bones back, chest and chin forward, and the top of the head toward your toes. Keep pulling the toes back. Kneecaps are up, toes are up, and the shin is up as you pivot. So kind of lengthen your spine, and then hold on to your ankles or toes, and come way up with the top of your head, lift through the chest, and pull the ribs back toward your spine even more. And then pivot a little bit deeper, if that works. So just keep reaching, head toward your toes, and deepen into your forward position as much or as little as you want. And then if you choose, you can tuck in your chin, bring your forehead down toward your knees. So just let the back of your body get a good stretch. And then chin up, crown up, shoulder blades down. Stretch your hands forward, bring them up by your ears, and pivot back all the way to parallel, the perpendicular, and bring your hands to your sides. And again, just feel your spine, feel that core a little bit more activated. And the dive out often. So one foot to your inner thigh, and the other heel next to your hip. Get those sitting bones sinking down evenly. Pat under that <clears throat> second side if you need to. And then stretch up through your spine and exhale toward your first bent knee. Hands to the floor or the leg. <clears throat> Ribs back and exhale, diving there. Face forward, crown up. And chest forward, leading up, sun and sky as you inhale, jumping up your dolphin, exhaling, diving it down. And just go through your range of motion, exhaling down, rotating up. So you want to feel your whole spine going into the forward bend as you dive down, and then Shifting into your back bend as you come up. So you want to really expand through the heart on that inhalation. Exhaling down, inhaling up to the sun and the sky. And then just one more cycle. And as you come back up, stay at the top. And exhale, turning back to the center. And release your legs into step. So again, adjust on your sitting bones. Make sure that your spine is nice and aligned. Heels out. And bring that other foot up and out to the side so we can dive to the other side. Heel back near your opposite hip. And exhale, turn. So lengthening through the spine so you get that good twist as you turn. Hands to wherever you want them to be as you dive. Exhale then. Rotate and inhale up. So a nice rounded spine in the forward bend, exhaling down. And a nice heart expansion coming up in the back bend. So dive your dolphin a few more times, just letting it playfully come through the waves, exhaling, and then leaping up, inhaling, sun and sky above you. And one more time as you come up this time, just stay at the top and exhale back to the center. Release your legs and again come into staff position. So get your sitting bones connected, spine stacked and stretching up. And we're going to bend one knee up to the front, 
with that heel next to the opposite hip. So this one's going to be tight through the hips, so do what you can. Opposite knee on top, and bring the, again, heel as close to your hip as you can. So knees stacked. They won't be near each other probably, although I have seen one person with amazingly loose hips that was able to do that, but don't worry if then. Just kind of try to have them one above the other. And if you need to move the heels out, try to keep them across from each other rather than necessarily back next to the hips. So whichever leg is on top, bring that opposite arm out, turn the palm toward the ceiling, and bring your arm by your ear. Shoulder, shoulder blades stay down. And then bend the elbow, bring that hand in to your neck. So take your other hand, pull the elbow in so it's as straight up as you can do. Slide that hand further down your spine into the middle of your back. Push your head back into that hand and then wrap your hand, the other hand around to see if you can clasp behind you and pull those elbows toward your spine and away from each other. So the elbow that's down goes toward the floor, the elbow that's up goes toward the ceiling. So keep your head pushing back. You don't want to be pushing your neck out of line. Everything stays lined up through your spine. And as we get into this kind of pretzel -y arm movement, you'll notice that maybe your hips relaxed a little bit. I think that's the whole point of doing this arm thing, is to get those hips to release maybe a little bit more. Anyway, that's my theory on hip day. So go ahead and maximize. You can just work those hands as close toward each other if they're not clasped as you want. And then releasing the arms, shake out the shoulders, and yeah, release the legs, and feel your body again. No longer in torture, I mean, cow face pose. So once more, go ahead and get your staff position. Just feel what your body is doing. Maybe a little more circulation through those hips, shoulders maybe too. And we're gonna do the other one. Yeah. So you know what's coming. Heel next to your hip, knee as straight ahead as you can get it, and the other knee on top. Again, stack those knees. Heels across from each other, either near the hips, or further out your choice. Relax through the hips. Let them sink toward the floor as much as they will while you're paying attention to them, but let's distract with the arms. So arm out, palm toward the ceiling, over your shoulder, bend that elbow, and hand in your neck. <clears throat> Pull with a hand on the elbow, slide the hand further down on your spine, and then wrap around and see if you clasp on this side. So some people do one side, some people do neither, and some do both. So just do what's right for your body and figure that out. And again, elbow up in the air and down toward the floor on the other side. And try to bring those elbows toward your spine a little bit more if your shoulders are willing to do that. The head keeps pushing back into that arm in the air because otherwise it tends to push forward and get you all wound into a curve instead of being a nice straight spine. Oh yeah, and maybe those hips are releasing a little bit more. Maybe not. Just be gentle, doing whatever's good for you. And then releasing your arms, shake it out. And, oh yeah, release those arms. And once more, just kind of feel how your body is responding. So we'll do one twist before our relaxation. So pull your foot in close, feel near your sitting bone. And this one's a little shoulder. So bring your arm inside the knee and pull the hand back towards your hip. And then take your other hand around and clasp either your hand or the back of your body or your hip or wherever. And then lengthen up. And as you exhale, turn away from the knee into the twist. 
So deepen as far as you want to. So this is going to be a real stretch through that shoulder area. So be gentle if you need to. You don't need to clasp the hands. You don't need to have that knee and shoulder point into each other too much if that's not working for you. Keep lengthening your spine though and turning from the hips, the ribs, and the shoulder, which if you haven't clasped your hands before may get you closer to clasping your hands. And then to release, bring your hand behind up, follow it back to the center, and unwind that shoulder, and bring your knee straight out, back into step. And of course, we're going to do that one to the other side, just before our relaxation. So bend your other knee, pull that heel in, <clears throat> readjust onto your sitting bones, bring that shoulder inside the knee, and wrap your hand back away. And again, hand comes up and around. And if you can clasp, that's fine. If you can't, that's fine too. Just pull on wherever it goes. Stretch up through your spine, lengthening, coming into your twist as you exhale. So hips, ribs, shoulder, turn deeper into that twist. Kind of pull the knee into the shoulder so that the knee comes as much kind of up toward the ceiling as it will while you're going ahead into the twist as much on this side as your body wants. So remember, maximize or minimize depending on what your spine and shoulder and body need on this side. Take a breath, relax into it, and then release the hand. We'll let it follow around back to the center, unwind that shoulder, and bring your leg down. So take a moment feeling how that twist energy has moved through you. Maybe your hips are more activated, maybe your shoulders. And we're going to do our relaxation. So go ahead and find your relaxation posture for this session. Kind of relax through the hips, through the <coughs> sacrum, lower back. Relax your shoulders down, hands, palms up, allowing those shoulders to stay nice and open across the heart and chest. And you can roll your legs in a little bit, or you can let them just relax into whatever is the natural position. And breathe. <clears throat> so go ahead and scan through your body. And notice if you've got any tightness in the hips and pelvis, just let it release. And a deep breath. Exhaling. Letting that whole lower body just soften. Hands, palms up. Letting those shoulders sink down a little further into that surface beneath you. And again, let the whole torso, midsection, just relax. Shoulders and arms releasing. Your whole body just growing heavy, sinking deeper, relaxing completely. Just let that hip and pelvic area release any tightness. Let your shoulders sink. Let your body just deepen into that earth connection. And let your body go. Totally relax. Really moving. Just focus on your breath. And as you exhale, just release the thoughts coming into your mind, letting them drift away unneeded, unnoticed. And as each thought comes in, just dismiss the content, remembering always. The job of your mind to keep producing thoughts. It's your choice if you pay attention. At this moment, you don't need to choose to focus on any of those thoughts. Just let them go, floating away, disappearing, unneeded, unnoticed. And as easily as your breath flowing in and out, let those thoughts drift away, allowing your awareness just to focus inward, 
And release your body, release your mind. Just allowing your attention to focus on that peace. And deepen into the peace, fully and completely. And go ahead and keep relaxing if you want to, or draw energy of awareness back to the moment, back to the room, back to your body, beginning to stretch it gently however you would like. And when you're ready for your yoga hug of appreciation, draw in your knees, back the arms around, and just let your body know that you felt a lot of appreciation for everything you do in yoga today and all the work your body does every day for you. And when you're ready to release, roll over to the side and sit back up, getting ready for whatever is ahead for you. Thanks for joining me.